Good morning, everyone. It's Anika Menon from HeartHealthBrainHealth.com, encouraging healthy grieving and mindful actions. Today, I wanted to talk about differences and how they divide and do not harmonize our selves or our families or our societies in the world. And this is a big concept. I'm hoping that I can shed a little bit of light on today for you. And I thought I'd start with one quotation by Swami Vivekananda. And it says, we are what our thoughts have made us. So take care what you think. Words are secondary. Thoughts live. They travel far. And this idea is letting us know that thoughts are like matter. When we have a thought, even though we think it's self-contained in the mind, it moves like matter. It's an energy. It's a process that has begun from our own minds and it starts traveling and it does travel far. And so if I am thinking judgmental thoughts, for example, it travels. So whether I speak about it or not is secondary, but if I'm thinking it, that person is such an idiot. <laughs> that person is so kind. Either one of those thoughts will travel. And so being careful about what we think is very, very useful. Now, a lot of people understand that thoughts, words, and actions are energy, but people forget that the subtle level of thoughts is even more powerful than words or action. So I noticed that on my Bali trip, there was a lot of discussion. And again, because so much of my time in Bali was about meditating and personal meditation, there was a lot of subtle energy that was going out from me and connecting with other energies to unify and unite uh, energies in the world. And so not only Bali, but I know that I was specifically asked to be in Bali. And so it was stemming from there to unite the energies there and then extend to the world. It's not limited to Bali. And so this is interesting when I think about this uh, process because I knew what I was being guided to share. And in this sharing, I know that no matter who I was out with, there was always a conversation that would come up and it would be about how Bali is different to Bali or Balinese are different than others because of this. So many times I'd hear, well, Hinduism in Bali is different than Hinduism in India. And no matter what the difference, so we could differentiate between Catholics and Protestants, we could differentiate between Muslims and Jews, we could differentiate between Hindus and Muslims, all of this, or one type of Hindu and another type of Hindu, all of this, when we differentiate, it divides us, it does not unite us, and it does not harmonize. And so I was very careful about directing people with this awareness because when we're thinking, every religion, every spirituality that I can see talks about this love for all, this true, pure love for all. And I think that's the true essence of religion. And this love for all comes with a conscious attention. And what do most people do? My family, my wife, my husband, my child, is most important. So I want you to do well as long as my family does a little bit better. So it starts with me. I want to do really well, maybe just a little bit better than my husband or wife, maybe just a little bit better than my best friend, maybe just a little bit better. So that's that, that selfish ego that comes in. Then we're not consciously thinking about this. We just happen to act in this way many times unless we're consciously making sure we do not. And so this then extends to my group, my society, my country is better, is more important, is doing more useful things, is uh, wiser, is again, this better than less than idea of when we look at another and we think of them as less than what we are, or we look at another and we think of it as better than we are. Both of these are actions of the ego. And uh, you can see that these thoughts created an energy in, in the world. And when this energy is created, it gains momentum with other similar energies. So if all of my country thinks it's better than another country, we could say sometimes Canada feels this way compared to the States. Sometimes we could say that States feels better than Canada. And again, oftentimes places that share borders start making these differences. And so this has happened throughout history for millennia. And what has it led to? A lot of 
difference, a lot of separation, a lot of isolation. And so today I would love for you to consciously think about when you speak about something, do you think about yourself as how different you are from something else or how different something else is from you? Or do you think about a unity perspective of, yeah, you know what? Every single person goes through anxieties, depressions, grief, sadness, sorrow, worries, concerns, all of these things are the shared common humanity, no matter which country, which religion, how it's practiced, nothing, none of that differentiates what humankind is at its core. And then there's this essence of goodness, this essence of goodness, which is in we each one of us. And yet many people have forgotten this. And so I thought I would read this quotation by Christian Dior to remind us about this too. It says, by being natural and sincere, one can often can create revolutions without having sought them. So I'll say that again. It says, by being natural and sincere, one often can create revolutions without having sought them. And this is interesting. We're looking at someone who's working with fashion. There's fashion revolutions, of course, but there's also revolutions in goodness. Do we see that whether we look at the history of Christ, whether we look at the history of Krishna, whether we look at the history of Martin Luther King, these are revolutions that have happened from one single person that has affected a lot because of thoughts, then words, and then actions. And again, it doesn't always need words and actions, but the thoughts are very, very powerful. So this is, again, being natural and sincere. This natural and sincere often is linked with things like honesty, kindness, peacefulness, loving energies. This natural and sincere essence of humankind, this is something that we can all build consciously. So today I would love for you to sit for five minutes and see, are you looking for differences or are you looking at unity? And do you recognize or understand that every thought you think is actually having an effect on the world? I hope that you do today. And I wanted to finish with one more Swami Vivekananda quote. And it says, the essence of Vedanta is that there is but one being and that every soul is that being in full, not part of that being. Now this being is capitalized in this quotation. This being could relate to God for some people, could relate to the universe for others, or it could relate to our higher self. Whichever way we look at it, it's this soul energy. And this oneness is shared by all of us. And this is the fullness of that oneness. This fullness contains the good, bad, and ugly. And if we can focus on the good, we are going to share the energy of goodness that then spreads throughout, whether our families, whether ourselves first, then our families, our friends, our society, our countries, our world. And this stems from this powerful energy of thought. And so I would wish that for all of us, whether you do this in meditative times, whether you do this in your prayer times, whether you do this when you're just sitting on a bus or on a bench, it doesn't matter, but be consciously aware of what kind of energy you are putting out into this world. Now you can do it consciously rather than unconsciously sharing energies that are perhaps not helping us all. I wish you a fantastic day, fantastic day, and I hope you remember, transform your mind and transform your life. Have a great day, everyone.